MBAs. I'm Lisa Cook, Senior Director of Career Services, and joining me is Associate Director Dina Berggren. And so our topic is networking because, as it is often said, it's not just what you know, it's who you know. And 70 to 80 percent of jobs are gotten through the hidden job market through networking. Um, and another piece I'd like to add is that in career services, we talk about career readiness as you advance in your career, and there's three parts to that. What new experience are you gaining? What new people are you meeting? And what new story are you telling? So we're going to pick the middle component and focus on building your professional network today. And so we're so glad to see so many of you joining us um, for this webinar. And so um, we're going to go ahead and introduce our Career Services Center team. And so there are five of us, and we all work in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I once got the question whether we work out of our cars. The answer is no. We're actually in an office in downtown Minneapolis by the Mississippi River. And just to introduce our team, we have uh, Dina Bergen, our Associate Director, who's joining me on today's webinar. And then I'm in the middle. And then on the top right is Angie Lira, our Senior Career Services Advisor. Nicole Skalski, bottom left, also a Senior Career Services Advisor, and Denise Cranky, also Career Services Advisor. So all of our advisors are generalists. They all have very diverse work experience before coming to Walden. They're very good at what they do, and they love supporting Walden students. So we're, we have a terrific team, and we're happy to support you in proactively managing your career. So that is our mission in the Career Services Center. We support students' proactive career management through educating, coaching, and advising them. And so that said, we're going to go ahead and talk about today's topic. So um, I'm going to give a brief definition of networking and talk about sources of connection. And I'm actually going to get all of you involved by asking you who is in your current professional network. And then I'm going to talk about playing to your strengths in terms of building your professional network whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or a centrovert, which is somewhere in the middle between an introvert and an extrovert, there are different um, strategies that you can use that will play to your strengths in terms of building your professional network. Then we'll talk about topics and venues for making connections, and then we'll come up with a few suggestions for icebreakers when you're at a professional meeting. So networking is defined as the art of building and sustaining Mutually beneficial relationships. I really like this definition. Not just building, but you've got to sustain them, and it shouldn't just be around the holidays when you're sending out holiday greeting cards. You need to keep those connections alive, and you need to work at maintaining them. It's like cultivating a garden. So in order to build your network, um, three things to think about. Finding common ground and developing rapport with people. So if you're walking into a room and you're starting to talk to someone, because someone asked me this question, what do you start off with? Do you ask them about their family? And I said, well, no, you don't ask about their family because not everybody has a family necessarily. So, you know, you just want to say, well, what do you think of this meeting that we've attended today? Or what do you think about the weather? You want to find common ground that you know is a slam dunk. Everybody knows what's going on with the weather. That's a nice, safe, neutral topic. So that's what I mean when I talk about developing rapport. You want to support your new connections, goals, and interests. So people are always wondering, you know, what's in it for them. And so you want to make sure that it's a mutually beneficial relationship, that you're not only asking for help and information, but you're also giving support and information as well. And then you want to consider ways to network both inside and outside your comfort zone. And the reason that's so important is because we often think birds of a feather flock together. Well, the thing about the birds that we flock with very frequently is those birds often have the same interests and know the same people that we do. So we have to expand our network to get outside our comfort zone and network with people who are outside of our professional field, who are outside of the places that we always go. We have to develop weaker social ties, and I'm going to talk about the importance of that in a bit. So um, that said, we'll go to the next slide. So I'm going to ask you all, I said I was going to get you engaged at the beginning of this webinar. So if you can type in the questions box, who is in your network? Now, I know the easy slam dunk on that is family and friends, but who else is in your network besides your family and your friends? So if you can type answers in your questions box, we're looking for some good suggestions here to share with the audience. Coworkers, fantastic. Teachers, former students. Supervisor, mentors, 
alumni, okay, so where you went to a previous school, LinkedIn, national wellness colleagues, wellness conference speakers, attendees, my previous employer, customers, clients, neighbors, church members. This is a great and diverse list. So are there any stretch members of your network? Okay, group member, people in the industry, alumni, boss, current coworkers, colleagues, colleagues in other parts of the world, that's terrific. So global network, customers, business partners. Okay, terrific. So as you think about who's in your network, I want you to consider not just the strong social ties that are in your network, but who are the weaker social ties that you have, the stretch ones. Um, okay, so mentors, former work colleagues, and social media. Great. So some of those social media connections might be the weaker social ties. So I want you to consider them maybe in a different way following this webinar. Okay, terrific. LinkedIn, always a great resource. Terrific. Okay, thank you for those answers. That was it's a good look. Executives and other business groups. Okay, great. So outside one's immediate business group and looking at other business groups. Terrific. Okay. So here's a story shared by Malcolm Gladwell. You might be um, familiar with him. He wrote um, several very well-known books. One of them is called The Tipping Point. And he shares on his blog and also in that book the story of Lois Weisberg. And so I'm asking you all, do you know any connectors? Who are the people in your network that are very, very well connected? We all know those people who know everyone, okay? So Lois was one of these people, and that, that made her a really good person to know because people go to her because she had such a diverse network. She had actors, writers, doctors, lawyers, park lovers, politicians, railroad buffs, flea market aficionados, musicians, visual artists, architects, and hospitality industry folks. So she was extremely well connected. And so um, Malcolm Gladwell referred to her as a master network, the type of person who knows everybody because she spreads ideas and information and connects varied and isolated parts of society. So even though she was the commissioner of cultural affairs in Chicago from 1989 until 2011, if you look at that bottom list of all the different types of people she was tied into, she had a very strong network with very diverse groups of people. So I want you to think in terms of whether you know anyone that you would consider a connector because being in good connection with a connector will help broaden your network that much faster, okay? So sometimes it's um, the people that we know in their network that can really help us out in terms of building our own professional network. And so the, there, if you want to read the article, it's a really interesting article, so the, the link is on the slide. So we'll go to the next slide. So, um, so I, I said that I would talk about personality styles. And um, before I do, I, I want to make one more point, actually, with regards to Lois Weisberg. There was a sociologist named Mark Granovetter in 1974 who did a book called Getting a Job, and he interviewed several hundred professionals in the Boston area about their work history and how they had landed their jobs. And he found that the majority had gotten their jobs through weak social ties, acquaintances rather than close friends. So that goes back to my point about the strength of weak social ties because he said acquaintances are much more likely to know something that you don't know. So they're, they're more likely to know people you don't know, know about jobs that you're not aware of. So that just brings that point home that much more. So I just want you, because we always think about the people in our immediate circle so often or in our professional association, but you know, again, like who are the people that are the weaker ties? We should start to tap into them as well. Okay, so looking at personality styles, do you lean toward introversion, extroversion, or centroversion? So um, I'm, I'm sure that some of you have taken the Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is a very well-known um, personality assessment. And so um, that will assess whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. And basically, introversion versus extroversion means where do we get our energy from? Okay, so introverts have a tendency to um, connect with their inner world and think before they speak, and um, they like deeper, fewer relationships. Um, there's a woman named Deborah Zach who wrote a book um, about networking, and she said that Introverts connect and extroverts collect. So extroverts are energized by the external world of people and things and activity. And so 
Um, it's, they have very different personality styles. So as the list goes here, introverts think, talk, extroverts talk to think. Introverts have a tendency to go deeper into topics. Extroverts will go wider. So extroverts might know more people, but not know them as well as introverts. Introverts have a tendency to energize alone. Extroverts energize with others. Introverts focus on thoughts and ideas. Extroverts focus on people and events. Introverts have a tendency to prefer one-on-one -on -one discussions, and extroverts prefer group discussions. So I also want to mention that you know we can all be an introvert or an extrovert at a certain point in time, even though we have a tendency to act one way most of the time. And then the folks in the middle, as you might guess, are the centroverts. So they're, they're somewhere between the introversion and extroversion on the spectrum. And so um, Susan Cain in her book Quiet states that introverts are about 30 to 50 percent of the population. If you're an introvert and you haven't read her book Quiet, you might want to take a look at it. She's also done a TED talk about introversion and the strength that introverts bring to the table. Um, and so, um, and just to be clear, I don't want to in, I don't want to generalize that introverts have a more challenging time than extroverts at networking. Um, I just want to emphasize that you might want to consider your personality type as you generate strategy. So if you're an introvert, you might prefer smaller groups of people rather than networking at a large happy hour or at a conference with 100 attendees. So that's, that's just something to think about in terms of your personality style. Next slide, please. So the strategies for introverts, um, pause, process, and pace. So, um, and this is from uh, Deborah Zach's book. So she talks about um, introverts um, really excelling at networking if they plan ahead and they research. So for example, if I'm going to a professional association meeting or a conference, can I find out who's going to be at that conference so I can research their backgrounds on LinkedIn and set specific networking goals to meet specific individuals? And so um, I might want to focus on a few key individuals and go into deeper conversations to create meaningful real connections. Um, and I want to look for opportunities to delve deeply into projects and relationships and also to allow downtime to process and restore energy after a meeting. So Dory Clark has written um, books about introversion and branding oneself. And she is an introvert herself. And she has stated that she, when she talks at a conference, She'll have people come up to her after the conference and, oh, let's all go to dinner. And she'll just nice and poli nicely and politely beg off because she knows that she needs that downtime to go back to her room and process what happened during her talk and think and get prepared quietly for the next day. She knows that about herself. So she can be perfectly fine speaking to 100 people, but at the end of that talk, she just wants time to process and reflect and have quiet time to herself. So just a good strategy to remember for introverts. If you feel drained after a networking event, it's good to re-energize and recharge those batteries. Next slide. So I mentioned the book um, Quiet by Susan Cain. And remember, I said no one's totally an introvert or an extrovert 100% of the time because we can adapt to the needs that we have, either in the workplace or in giving a talk. I mean, there are teachers that will talk to a large class, but they're introverts. And so she's she calls this a free trade agreement. So for example, an introvert seeking a new job finds it challenging to attend large networking events and not knowing anyone. That introvert, because they really want to land a job, they are going to make a free trade agreement with themselves and say, you know, I'll go to this networking event and maybe I'll buy a CD I really like afterwards to reward myself because this is in, in support of the larger goal that I have of landing a great job, and this is just some, a step that I need to take. So she agrees to wear her extroversion hat as she feels comfortable in support of a goal. So people do this all the time, okay? So that's what, you know, if your spouse says, let's go to the neighborhood party and you don't want to go, but you know that it's good for the neighborhood, for mm -hmm. the neighbors to know each other, then you're going to go to the party and do a free trade agreement. And so um, just something to think about there. We can adapt very well if we just put our minds to it and we plan ahead. Next slide, please. So Lisa Petrilli is the author of The Introvert's Guide to Success in Business and Leadership, and she advises introverts to take on this approach. Look at networking as one good conversation with one person at a time. So rather than thinking about that conference with 400 people, just think about the fact that you're really going to be talking just to one person at a time. 
reach out to new individuals via social media to say that you look forward to meeting them at a conference or a networking event. And take time to re-energize with time alone, just like Dory Clark mentioned, after a busy social event. So extrovert strategies, patter, promote, and party. So they are comfortable talking to strangers and spontaneous interactions. They converse with little effort. They are at ease with diverse people and circumstances. They easily talk about their accomplishments. They cast a very wide social net and they gravitate towards a wider range of experiences and interests. They're always up for something new. Okay, so they usually have an easier time at very large functions. And they'll, they'll work the room very well. They'll go from one person to another. And, and they, because they really want to cast a wide net. Remember, they wanted the broader network, not necessarily the deeper network connection. So now we're going to look into topics and venues for all personality types in hopes that we'll land on a new networking strategy that will work for you. So let's go ahead into those. So first of all, I want to start with um, the, uh, looking at common ground topics for connection. So what can we talk about? Remember I said, you know, you want to stay away from topics that someone might have, not have something to talk about. So what are the common ground topics? Career paths, accomplishments, professional interests, personal interests, common experiences, future plans, current projects, seeking advice, or discussing one's academic path. So those are good space topics for connecting with folks. Okay, and these are some great icebreakers that I found in an article just today from um, iInc.com. And so um, some nice icebreakers for a professional meeting that you might be attending. So what great weather we're having or snowy weather or cold weather or wherever you are, depending on how that's going for you this winter. We're having a lovely winter in Minnesota. It's in the 40s. We're snow free. It's great. Um, isn't this a lovely location? So if you're at a nice um, meeting venue or, you know, there's just a a window with a great view that you're looking out, you know, it's safe to talk about the venue. Um, is this your first time at this event? I really liked that thing that you said, so just mention what they said that fascinated you. I really loved your last blog post or book or article. Um, that's a beautiful scarf you're wearing or ring or piece of jewelry. Um, do you know anything about the next session at the conference? A good, safe, uh, neutral topic. Can I help you with that? Whether the person has their hands full and they're trying to grab a glass of punch and they've got their hands full and you want to grab the punch from them and you're maybe get the punch for them, excuse me. Um, are you having a good event? Do you know what's happening next? What do you recommend? I've been to your hometown. Do you know Mary Smith? And I've been wanting to meet you. So those are some great icebreakers. The key to icebreakers is, you know, you want to ask good open-ended questions that are going to promote conversation where you can explore whether you have common ground to take that conversation further. So here are some possible venues for connecting. So I'm sure you've thought about all the really obvious ones like conferences and professional associations. Um, but some others we wanted to mention, um, meetup.com, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, um, nextdoor.com, which is for um, neighbors to connect with each other. Um, you probably are connecting with folks through your alumni association, um, your homeowners association, your neighborhood, local clubs, chamber of commerce, volunteering, classes, Toastmasters, um, you know, uh, parents of, um, you know, kids who go to your children's school, um, church. So there are a lot of different ways. I mean, it's not just professional venues. It's, it's a lot of, um, you know, basically personal venues as well when you're out and about. Even, you know, the hair salon, you know, um, you just never know who you're going to meet. So look at it, or being in an airport or being on an airplane, just there, um, Roy Rogers said that strangers are friends I haven't met yet. I think that's a really good networking attitude. So, um, and then I also want to mention that you can um, network really effectively through Walden's online community. And so if you go to the My, Ward, My Walden portal, and click on the Student Life tab, and then click on Discover Our Community, you can instantly be connected with folks in business and management. And so I did a screenshot here. You can see um, when, you're, um, when you click on Social Connect, you click on Interest in Student Groups, and then you've got numerous academic disciplines indicated there. So just click on um, Business and Management. 
And they've got other types of groups too, like military spouses and nursing honors society and international clubs. So there are other types of student groups. And you can also create a student group if you're not finding the one that um, fits you well. So um, let's go ahead to the next slide. So here's the business and management community. And I just thought this was fantastic because you can see the categories on the left-hand side, accounting, business administration, finance, HR, leadership. So all the MBA specializations. And then folks are posting that they want to connect with folks in their discipline. So for example, you can see the middle card there. Anyone else starting a PhD in management in December? I just got accepted and I want to connect with others who are starting the program December 1st. So if you're an MBA student studying HR management, you could post you know, I want to connect with others. And actually, um, one of the messages was a student who wanted to start a DBA Facebook community. And so she successfully did that through recruiting folks here. So I thought that was really interesting. So if you haven't visited the Walden online community, I would highly recommend that you do so. And um, another advantage, which we'll show on the next slide, is that um, they have online ambassadors in the Walden online community. So you can see here um, a whole lot of Walden University ambassadors listed, um, and they've volunteered to be part of that community and answer student questions. And so you can see those are live hyperlinks to be able to contact those folks. And so their degree that they earned from Walden, if they're alumni, um, you are know, indicator if they're current students or current degree programs listed. So I just think this is a fantastic resource, and I'd highly recommend taking full advantage of it. Okay, and so here are some examples of some business and management ambassadors that I found on the online community. And so, um, and since this is an MBA cafe, um, you'll see that there's a student in the middle there, Robert Bose, who is in the MBA program. And so that might be someone you might want to connect with. Okay. Um, and then in addition to Walden's online community, we have a Walden University Career Services Center LinkedIn group that we invite all students and alumni to join because we post all of our job listings that we receive from employers in our Walden University Career Service Center LinkedIn group. Um, and also we post upcoming announcements of programs that we're going to offer. Um, and so it's just a great way to stay connected. And we have about 3,400 members of that community. And so the purpose on being in a LinkedIn group is to network with others. And so you can feel free to search the members of that group and connect with them because they're they're looking to connect with you as well. Also, on our Career Services Center website at careercenter.waldenu.edu, under resources by college or school, we list 26 LinkedIn groups um, of interest to folks who are in um, the School of Management. And so there's the list there. And so you can see, you can just um, find different LinkedIn groups for different specializations in business. So that might be another way um, to connect as well. LinkedIn groups are fantastic in terms of getting your professional reputation out there, both in terms of posting your own questions and answering other people's questions. Um, and also you can search members of a group by location and by keywords. And so that's just another fantastic resource to network with um, folks online. Also, we have um, a Walden University Career Services Center Facebook community that has about 1,600 members now. And so another way to connect with folks and keep up on um, news and events and um, good articles as well. Okay, and so I mentioned I was going to talk about meetup.com. And I know it sounds like a dating site, but I just want to assure you that it is not Match.com. It is not a dating site. Um, it is for personal networking in order to meet new people, make new connections offline. So if you're not familiar with Meetup, what you want to do is just go to meetup.com and create your own account. You can put a picture up or not. Um, and you can put as much information about yourself as you'd like. Some people will put what their hometown is and what their interests are. Other people will have minimal information on there. But basically, you can search for topics of interest and find social groups that you can join and attend their events. And so, for example, here, I was logged into Meetup and I put in career and business. That was one of their topics, actually, that I could select. And you could see I came up with um, a group for investing. I came up with a group for um, business startups in Minnesota and then real estate investors. 
And so that's just a small, you know, grouping there. But, you know, maybe in your city there will be a more diverse group of um, business meetup groups. Or if you don't find one that um, is to your field of interest, you can create a LinkedIn, or excuse me, a meetup group as well. You can create your own meetup group. I actually hosted one for 18 months, and I really enjoyed doing that. It's very easy to host it. So, but, um, so basically, once you join a meetup group, they will um, announce events. So let's say that there is a networking event coming up at a, you know, at a local restaurant at, you know, 5 o'clock on Friday. So you'll just go ahead and sign up, RSVP, you can take a friend, and then you just show up for the event. They list who the host is, and you look for the host, and then you're off and running it through meetups. And so it's um, a really great way, and especially if you're new to an area, or if you really want to find people who are connections who are outside, um, you know, the weaker social ties, meetups would be a great way to do that. Um, another great way to network, and I think especially I would say for introverts, because I have a tendency to lean that way myself, would be um, volunteering. And so the reason volunteering is so great is because you make connections and you prove yourself outside of a stressful interview context and you can show your skills and your abilities and your knowledge in an area um, through volunteering. And just so you know, volunteermatch.org has both offline and online. So you can find virtual networking opportunities through that site. And so basically you can see, you put in your location, so here on St. Paul, Minnesota, and then you've got this search box where you can say what the area is. And they've got suggested um, volunteer topics, arts and culture, you know, human rights, um, you know, board development, animals, so you can, um, you know, homelessness, I mean, whatever in environmental issues, whatever your issue of interest is, you can put that in and it will bring up volunteer events. And it will bring in, bring up both volunteer events that are one-time opportunities. So, for example, if they're looking for volunteers for a silent auction, um, you know, you could sign up for that. Or um, they will bring up ongoing volunteer opportunities like tutoring someone in reading. So um, it's a really great site, so you might want to check out opportunities in your area. Toastmasters is another great organization for building your professional network and also strengthening your public speaking skills as well. And so, um, you know, it's an international organization with a fantastic reputation, so we highly recommend it. And we've heard numerous students time and time again keep saying how great Toastmasters is. Dina, you belonged to Toastmasters for a while. I did. And do you want to mention anything about the value that you got out of it? Um, absolutely. Uh, Toastmasters uh, is a great organization that allows you to take on uh, various leadership roles within the organization and um, helps you really deliver speeches and really focus on areas of presentation skills that you really want to cultivate. So it's a very supportive environment. Uh, people with all levels of knowledge and skills, and uh, I had a great experience with Toastmasters. She's got a very broad smile on her face, so you can tell she really enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I did, absolutely. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and so you just never know where good networking connections are going to be met, so I'm just going to share a very brief story on a key networking connection that I met. Um, and his name is Gary, and I was sitting at a coffee shop near my house, and um, I overheard him interviewing someone. And I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but they were, you know, they were sitting very close to me. So I overheard the conversation. And then, you know, he, he uh, said goodbye to the woman he was interviewing, and he called someone on his cell phone, and he said she would have been a great candidate for volunteering, but she's just too busy. And so my ears perked up, and I thought, I'm always up for volunteering. So I said, so, you know, I don't mean to eavesdrop, but, you know, can you tell me what you're recruiting for? And then I saw he had this green T-shirt on, and it said Eastside Meals on Wheels. So he is on the board of Eastside Meals on Wheels in the Twin Cities. And if you're not familiar with Meals on Wheels, they deliver meals to housebound um, senior citizens. And so, um, so we started talking, and, you know, he said, any skill that you'd want to offer to the organization? Because I said, you know, I work downtown. I don't know if I can deliver meals because... But he said, you know, we have other opportunities. You can, you know, march in our parade. You can, you can do a whole bunch of different things. So it turns out now I'm a, I actually write stories for the Eastside Meals on Wheels newsletter. I call their clients who give them permission to be interviewed for um, their newsletter, and I, I will write up stories. So, um, you know, because there, there were all types of volunteer opportunities. But anyway, so we had a volunteer fair at Walden to, uh, to promote our social change mission. 
And so they were looking for people from nonprofits who were recruiting volunteers. And so you can see the picture on the top left, Gary and I are recruiting for Eastside Mills on Wheels. And then the picture on the bottom right, we went to a networking event because not only is he my volunteer you know, colleague at Eastside Mills on Wheels, but he's been a really great mentor as well. And he's gotten me involved in a professional association I didn't know about here in the Twin Cities. He's retired from IBM. He has exceptional tech skills, and I'm trying to – um, acquire new Mac skills, so he has um, assisted with that, um, and so he's just he's been a really great mentor in addition to being a connection at a coffee shop. So you just never know, and he's not someone that I would have met in my normal circles, but because I was willing to take a risk at a coffee shop, you know, it was a great connection. So just thinking outside that networking box a bit. Next slide, please. So. Now I'm going to throw the ball to you all again. So um, if you could please um, type in the questions box, what is your next strategy for connecting? So what are you going to, to do? Okay, I, and I see someone's doing, um, someone did uh, work with an organization similar to Eastside Meals on Wheels in Santa Fe, New Mexico. That's great. It's called Kitchen Angels. That's great. Same objective. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so... Um, Looks like one student's going to tap into LinkedIn. I hope you'll join our Wall University Career Services Center LinkedIn group. Meetup.com, great. I think you'll enjoy Meetup. Check into nonprofit opportunities. A lot of looking into LinkedIn. Um, just so you know, we do a three-part webinar series on LinkedIn. So we talk about building your profile and branding yourself through LinkedIn and engaging with new folks on LinkedIn. And so. We have those um, webinars archived on our website, and we offer LinkedIn cafes pretty frequently. So um, if you want more information on LinkedIn, that might be a good resource. Um, the link would be if you go to the Career Center site, so careercenter.waldenu.edu, and you click on the button that says Archived Webinars, it will take you to our um, LinkedIn webinars. So thanks for asking. Okay, I spoke with Angie this morning. I'm going to look into volunteering. So she spoke with one of our career advisors, Angie. That's terrific. These are great. Okay, um, meet people in an organizational-wide class. Being more active on social media and also be more open with new people at airports. That's great. That's good. Volunteer in church. Terrific. Great suggestion. Excellent. Okay. We can go on to the next slide. So how are you going to stay in touch with your connection? So you make some new good ones. How do you stay in touch with people? Are you, do you send out holiday cards? Do you throw an annual party at your house? Or do you organize the office holiday party? Or how do you stay in contact with your connection? I'm personally a big fan of um, using LinkedIn, OK? And the reason is because LinkedIn will give me all these nice prompts about people who are in my network. So they'll tell me if a certain person got a new job or if a certain person has a work anniversary or, um, oh, God, all types of things. Um, I'm just trying to, oh, if someone has a birthday. So I, I get all these updates through LinkedIn, so I'll try to reach out to people that way. Okay, so send greetings, share articles, phone, social media, email, excellent strategies. I'm wondering if you um, go to alumni events at all, if that's a way to stay in touch with folks, professional association meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, I, speaking for the Career Services Center team, we just had two of our advisors do a really great presentation at a local meeting on strategic volunteering. And so the team here stays in touch with folks in the professional association through either presenting themselves or attending a meeting where someone else is presenting and, and you know, keeping those strong connections um, viable. Attend common or new events. Great. Okay. Excellent. And one thing to think about, too, and I know I've, I mentioned this, um, but if you would like to get to know people in your neighborhood, because a lot of us don't know who our neighbors are, you really might want to look into that nextdoor.com as a way to make new connections because uh, that's really grown to be a very wide network all over the country. And basically, you visit that website. It's free, and you put your address in, and they will tell you whether there is a next door community in your area or whether you'd, they'll ask if you'd like to create one if there isn't. 
And our neighborhood has it, and they post announcements, like whether a sale is, uh, there's an item for sale or giveaway, or whether there's a street reconstruction project coming, um, you know, or just some development that's been in the news about the area. So it's a great way to communicate with neighbors. So just wanted to mention that. It's, it's again, one, another way to think outside the networking box. Get a professional photo. Very good. Very good. Okay. Social network. Okay, these are great, great suggestions. So thank you for sharing these. So just a couple um, resources I wanted to mention. The Networking for People Who Hate Networking by Deborah Zach. I referenced that several times. I also mentioned Dory Clark, um, Reinventing You. She's the person who talks a lot about branding for introverts. And, um, and there's also a U.S. News um, article about networking tips for online MBA students. So I thought you might find those interesting. Okay. So I think we're ready to connect. Okay. So we'll go into ways that you can stay connected with career services. Um, so as I mentioned, we have a LinkedIn group. And you will find all these social media buttons on our website at careercenter.wallamu.edu. So just click on the buttons and it will take you directly to our LinkedIn group. Um, we hope that you'll join. We also um, have a Twitter feed where um, Angie sends out articles via Twitter every day um, that are really great articles. She always sends these fascinating ones that I get because I read the calendar and the schedule and there's always such a wide diversity of topics. So, um, and then on YouTube, we have Career Spotlights, um, which are success stories that the team has recorded of successful alumni and students. Um, we just uh, posted one on a DBA student who used um, online networking to build her international consulting business, okay? And um, also we have a um, Facebook community, as I mentioned, and we have a blog. So uh, if you want to share a success story with us, we would love to write up your story for our blog or um, actually record your story for our spotlights. Also, we have an optimal resume system where we have about um, 9,800 users um, who create accounts to build their resumes, their cover letters, their electronic portfolios, um, and also their own personal websites to house those other materials. So you can access all these resources at our website at that link. And so now we're going to open it up to questions. And so Dina has some questions, I think, in the questions box to, to ask. One question is, uh, so I'm in job seeking mode. Mm -hmm. Lisa, what resources does the Career Services Center offer me? Great. Great question. Okay, so you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one career advising appointment with a career advisor to talk about your goals for your degree program and talk about strategies to help you meet those goals. Also, um, she will review your um, resume if you are in job seeking mode. Um, also, we have career boost videos that are accessible on our website under the quick start button. And basically, if you're looking at doing a resume at midnight, and unfortunately we're closed at midnight, um, basically you can play a 10 to 15 minute video on topics that are most frequently asked questions from our students. So how to do a resume or a cover letter, um, you know, how to build an electronic portfolio, how to use optimal resume, and a wide variety of other topics, how to negotiate a raise or promotion. So you might want to take a look at those career boost videos. Um, also, next slide, we are going to be running a job search support series coming up um, this month. Okay, so actually starting as early as next week. Um, and so you'll see um, there will be a webinar on researching career information and jobs and then resume nuts and bolts. And then another one on more general networking strategies and also interviewing. So you can think of that as networking part two. It will be different contents if you want to more information about networking. And you can attend one of these webinars or all these webinars. So it, just you know, attend the ones that you need to attend. And we archive all of our webinars on our website. So you will find that if you want to listen to this recording again, um, you just visit the archived webinars and also the Job Search Support Series webinars as well. And we have a few more questions coming in. Um, right. Will graduates have access to the Optimal Resume System? Yes. So you keep your Optimal Resume account. It's a free service available to you. And once you graduate, you will continue to have access to those materials to update them as you need to. So that account is yours and you keep it after you graduate. So thanks for asking that question. What about access to the Career Services Center website? Yes. 
Career Services Center website, you keep access to that as well. So, um, and we hope that you'll take full advantage because we're always adding new content. Um, there was a major renovation done to that website. Um, Dina Bergen, in addition to being our associate director, is our chief webmaster. And working with Angie Lira, who also has great technology skills, they did a lot of updating and strengthening to that website um, in the middle of last year. And it's just, it's, it's a fantastic resource. I specifically want to draw attention to the Getting Started tab. Dina, do you want to mention what's in the Getting Started Absolutely. tab? Absolutely. The Getting Started tab is a great place to start on our site. It offers um, recommendations from our staff and also lists our top 10 resources. So because we have so much information on our website, the Getting Started will get you to the right resources and the most popular resources. <laughs> great, great, excellent. Excellent. And then um, there's a comment that Angie gave me a lot of food for thought for job seeking, very helpful. Thank you, I bet Angie's on, so I'm sure she's hearing that. So yes, thank you for absolutely. sharing that. And is it possible to have an appointment while outside the US? Yes, it is. It is possible, and we do have appointments with international students. Gina, do you wanna mention anything else about that? Absolutely. So we work with students from all over the country and all over the world. Um, we will call you uh, where, wherever you are, and we can also use email and other tools to make sure that we can connect. So we um, serve many international students, and we uh, uh, help with job search and career management. Excellent. Um, and where can we find the list of webinars and, and signing up for them? Okay, well, um, at the beginning of every month, we do a student communication out to all students on our webinars. And so you will find a student communication coming from myself, Lisa Cook, and Career Services that lists both our Career Services overviews, which are half hour webinars that give an overview of all of our various services, as well as our skills cafe. So um, we have skills cafes on, every month we offer a skills cafe on resumes and CVs. So if you want quick tips, then you can ask your specific question to the advisor hoping, um, hosting the webinar and they'll, they'll answer your specific questions. But we do others such as researching job and career information and networking. So every month we offer different cafes in addition to always offering the resume and the CV cafe. And so, um, and also we do one large topical webinar typically a month. And so, for example, we're going to be mobilize. the topic for January is going to be mobilize and organize your job search for those whose New Year's resolution happens to be getting a new job in 2016. And so, um, but you'll see we did one, um, for example, on the difference between leadership and management that we did with um, John Nuremberg and Henry Braschen and school of management, their two school of um, management faculty members and they talked about the difference between leadership and management. That's one that I would think would be of interest to all business students. Um, and so you can watch that through our archive webinars, through our website. It's, the recording is on there. And, and our topical webinars are about an hour long. Our skills cafes and overviews are about half hour to 45 minutes long. And we also post everything. Dina posts and Angie posts everything on our website at the very beginning of the month. So you'll find, if you visit careercenter.walmu.edu, you will find the descriptions for all of our monthly cafes and webinars and a link to register there. So just visit our homepage and you'll, you'll find all of those. Thank you. And there's a question, is Lori connected to this? And I, I'm assuming it's the, um, referring to if you're a, connected to the Laureate network, would you have access to our resources? Um, well, if, if you're a dual, I guess, if, okay, so to answer the question, if you're a dual degree student, so I'm thinking, um, you know, if, if you're affiliated with another um, Laureate institution in Walden as a dual degree student, the answer is yes, you can use our resources. I, I see, I took the question different way, so I'll just, I'll just approach it a little differently. So the relationship between Laureate and Walden is that Laureate is um, basically the, the corporation that owns a number of universities worldwide and Walden is the largest online university under the Laureate network. So um, hopefully one of those ways answered your question the way you wanted it to be answered. Okay. 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 And do you document all questions and answers for follow-up? Um, yes, actually we have a recording because we um, when we log off of the webinar we get a log of all the questions. So yes, we do. 
Mm -hmm. And those will be the uh, the questions for today. So okay. thank you, everyone, who contributed. Um, Great. And we will can go back one that. Yep. yep. Thanks. Well, thank you all so much for attending, and I wish you um, a great number of very meaningful connections. Okay. And so just remember, um, you know, a stranger is um, a friend you haven't met yet. That's a good good way to. Um, and also think about those weak social ties, cultivating those in 2016. Because I think you'll you'll be surprised at the number of, of new connections and new opportunities that will open up once you think outside your usual network. Um, and so, and this quote is perfect for that. So Neil Donald Walsh states, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So we hope that you have gotten some great strategies for traveling outside your comfort zone. And um, we wish you um, a great rest of the month and a happy holiday season. And uh, and let us know how we can support you because we're here to do that and um, we're happy to do it. So take care, everyone. Thank you and have a nice evening.